Jane Mbithi is the only female in the automotive engineering program at the Northeastern National Polytechnic in Garissa, a city almost 400 kilometers northeast of Nairobi, near the border of Somalia. She takes a long one-hour journey every day to pursue a higher education after being inspired by her father to enter this field. My dad encouraged me, but some of my family members just told me, you know what, Jane, you are very tiny. Will you be able to remove that tire from the vehicle. In fact, she started using grinders and welding machines in her father's garage as a teenager. I used to love machines, and especially my mom wanted me to do something else. But dad would tell me, you know what, it's good you start, you do something different. Young people, especially young women like Jane, are the focus of the Kenya Education for Employment program known as KEFEP. KEFEP is a seven-year project started in 2016, funded by Global Affairs Canada and implemented by Colleges and Institutes Canada, in cooperation with the Kenya government's Ministry of Education. The focus is on enhancing technical and vocational education and training in Kenya through its TVET institutions. Traditionally, they have been viewed as a last option for many young Kenyans. We are in an environment where people have this notion that you have to pass exams and the only way you can demonstrate that you've done well is by going to the university. So anyone who doesn't make to the university therefore feels like they are a failure. So changing that and having a paradigm shift that college or TVET courses can be taken by people who even qualify to go to the university. Now we've generated a situation where we have a lot of university graduates with a lot of papers, uh, but uh, uh, very, very poor employability rates. Uh, recent studies have shown that uh, employability of TVET graduates is extremely high. So, so as a country, we lost an opportunity uh, for many years where we neglected TVET. So we think that uh, uh, part of the reforms that we are doing is to bring TVET to where it belongs, because without TVET, uh, we can't move forward. To improve the image of TVET institutions, faculty and staff from Canada and Kenya have partnered with industries such as agriculture, manufacturing, renewable energy, and tourism and hospitality. They've shared best practices on curriculum development, with a heavy focus on hands-on learning. They have also focused on implementing gender equality throughout the TVET sector, much as colleges and institutes have done in Canada. And what's unique about the Canadian community college system is that the schools really go out to the communities to find out what the needs are in the communities. And then the school adjusts, constantly adjusts their programming to make sure that they're training the students for jobs that are going to exist by the time they graduate. Canadian colleges and institutes have an employability rate of about 90%. In part, that's credited to their approach of using hands-on learning and involving industry. Taking the Canadian model for experiential learning, 
um, is really a proven model that does work for industry. So if we can take that model and show it to others, showcase it to others, and then wrap all those things around it that the Canadian system you know, has embraced, it is a great model to help their economies grow. What really I admired about everything is that the curriculum that was developed, it was di directly relevant to the country, Kenya. It was not now the CIKN from the Canada that was now bringing its training to the Kenyans. Yes, what about the course? One of the most significant changes under KEFEP was the move to competency-based education and training, better known as CBET. Not only did the trainers learn this new model, they also practiced it themselves. So basically, uh, our approach is to put the partners in the center of the process. So it means that uh, it doesn't matter if it is a workshop, for example, we're going to be always involving them and, and asking them to, to have hands-on activities, right? So it can be in a small task. So for example, if we are discussing a, a concept, uh, we're going to launch la right after activities, exercises, and, op and give opportunities for them to be able to apply what they are acquiring from the different experiences, right? Remember, if you don't change the trainer, the trainee will not be what you want. New curricula created under KEFEP have a stronger focus on practical skills while still integrating some theory. In CBET's style of teaching, uh, CBET is more of hands-on than writing, than the classwork. So we really do much of practice. Uh, we show them uh, to do their work using their own hands. Uh, we skill them so at the end of the lesson or at the end of the program this student or the trainee should know how to work and earn a living uh, with, the, with his or our own hands so when you go to class teaching more time we spend on doing things practically even when you are evaluating when you are evaluating we do a lot of evaluation on practicals Theories now, nowadays we take around, maybe around, around 10 to 15 percent, but around 70 and more is practicals. Okay, in Tibet, you are taught the skills, unlike in the university, where you are taught the, the theory part, but in the Tibet institution, you are taken to the farm, you are shown that these are the tractors, these, these are how they work, unlike in the university. And then it was teacher-centered. Now it is student-centered or learner-centered. And this has been a new experience to us because the NEC curriculum that we, we have implemented for many years uh, put more emphasis on the theories rather than the, 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 the practicals where skills are acquired. The move to a CBET model of teaching and learning is intended to better prepare graduates before entering the workforce. On the approach of the curriculum development, we, we, the, the aspect of the product being as important as the process, it was a, a key milestone in all, in all this. Another change in curriculum was enhancing soft skills. Graduates, even if they have the technical skills, they may not have the, the basic communication skills, problem solving skills, teamwork, all of those things. And those are things that some people have inherently, but can also be taught. And so what we're doing now is trying to embed some of those soft skills into the training. Yes, have some standalone training, but also integrate it into everything else. We learn that attitudes are very important. So. That was something that was actually, that is missing in our curriculum. We are preparing our students to go out in the industry to work. But sometimes they miss out on those small skills, interpersonal skills that are actually important and necessary to make them excel in the, in the market. One of the major pillars of CAFEP has been improving gender equality in TVET institutions creating a more inclusive environment for all students. 
So there are some courses that are very skewed to female and there are some courses that are extremely skewed to male. The next step now is trying to get a balance in, in gender when it comes to uh, course uptake. The job equality for, for both gender is important because everyone requires a job and everyone has the skills to perform the job. So with this, uh, sometimes it even discourages some of us men, because if we see ladies opting out from class, not doing the program, we again feel like, uh, you see, we want them to, to, to be there to have that gender equality. Yeah, we feel like we are not desperate having them there, because we share ideas, we come up with so many things with them. The National Polytechnics introduced gender committees as a first step. Those committees have worked to encourage more young women to enter TVET institutions. At the individual level, most women and girls don't have information on um, availability of uh, TVETs and even the courses that are being offered in, in TVETs. I want, of course, not to mention that uh, most women and girls, they face uh, different issues, especially in a, very, in a family that are poor. You realize that uh, when the family is to choose who is to go to uh, an institution, if they have a boy and a girl, you realize that that family will always give a preference to a, a boy. So that's also another barrier. The Kepa partnership also worked hard on changing the perceptions of young women towards TVET education. When we are training in a class, uh, we don't in any way we try to give examples that uh, appear to be, to be biased toward a particular gender. Two, even when you are assigning students activities to, to carry out in a class or in practices outside the classwork, you don't discriminate any of the gender in any way. Anybody who's developing curriculum needs to look through an inclusive lens when they are developing lesson plans and developing testing materials. And these are the kinds of conversations that are happening um, in Kenya as well. And this has really motivated uh, ladies who are taking this as a man field. And as you can see right now, uh, this is a field for everyone. Changes were also made inside and outside of the classroom to create a gender-friendly atmosphere. New and modern equipment was also introduced to accommodate women in physically demanding jobs. The program has procured equipment that are uh, women uh, or they are gender responsive. Uh, we went to these institutions and we saw some of the girls trying to manipulate the machine and that was something that was so different, especially when we were doing our gender analysis. And that's something we look at and say, wow, yes, our program has made a difference. Like we used to have uh, a dye stock that was uh, adjustable and that was uh, about four kgs. Imagine carrying that with one hand and using it, controlling the material with another hand. It was a challenge for the female students. In total, CAFIP invested six million Canadian dollars worth of equipment in nine national polytechnics. That equipment directly benefits students who are currently enrolled. And more than 1,900 students expected to register in new courses developed under CAFIP by 2023. Getting new equipment was critical to the introduction of the CBET curriculum. And when we mention equipment, it means how can we use equipment in the teaching and learning process? Uh, so the difference between seeing a picture of a machine in a textbook versus actually being able to work on that equipment and test the equipment and try it out and learn uh, on the equipment. And so that's been really a shift from uh, the way teaching and learning was done in the past through to what it is currently at uh, in, in implementation at our partner institutions. But now with this system now, it's like if you tell a student this is a pump, this is how it functions and the like, you go to the ground and really do it with them. They're also enjoying. That's why I'm saying it's more participatory than it was on the other side. Collaborating with industry has been the foundation of CAFEP. We've learned a lot also on how the industry and the trainer and the trainee combine, which is a very technical thing for upcoming economists. How do you make sure these three players are able to 
work properly. We've also tried to uh, bring in other government uh, agencies together to build synergies in terms of uh, how to address the, the whole skill setup uh, training. And we are finding this one bearing a lot of fruit because of the synergies that we are putting in place. These newly formed partnerships between the National Polytechnics and industry benefit both students and employers. Traditionally, the problem has been relevance in terms of what, happen, what they are taught in school. And when they come here, uh, there's a mismatch. There's a mismatch in, in, in skills. So we would typically have to retrain them so that then they are up to the standard that we require in, in industry. So that's a major, that's a major, major challenge, as well experience. Um, you see, you find that in most cases, the trainees do not have the experience, and so they are coming to learn from scratch, which can take quite a bit of time and can be quite as well uh, capital intensive on the company. Since the start of CAFEP, the gap between industry and the National Polytechnics has narrowed through the introduction of industry advisory committees at each institution. With the knowledge we have now, and with the, the knowledge now available to us, I am sure our approach to teaching will not be the same. And uh, we are going to be able to bring in industry in everything. Industry input is important when it comes to preparing students for attachment and eventual employment. Attachment allows students to work directly in their field prior to graduation. This gives them an opportunity to gain experience by practicing the hands-on skills learned in class in a professional atmosphere. It helps a lot because uh, when we, we go for an attachment, you get that you acquire more skills. Whatever you've not been taught here, you will get in the field. To strengthen the partnerships between institutions and industries, some have signed Memoranda of Understanding, or MOUs. I think MOUs are very much important because through MOU, one is able to stick to whatever that we have agreed on. And once we do this MOU, it has created advantages to our institutions, more especially when we talk of the industries. Nowadays, we have so many rings with the industries. These MOUs make sure that we're um, asking and getting that validation and feedback and that the, the uh, industry is playing a part as well. They're not just saying, good, now you guys are going to do all the work. Send me these great grads at the end and I'll see you in five years. Um, so th they're, those are very helpful as well. KEFEP's impact is being felt beyond the classroom as well. Nearly 140 leaders and managers have also received training with Canadian partners. Throughout the CAFE program, management has undergone various sensitizations and trainings. Some have been carried out in Canada, others have been carried out here in Kenya. They've been trained on various managerial skills, a lot about gender issues, a lot about being environmental, sen sensitive about environmental issues. And we have seen that really down in the way the management has been laying out policies. We have uh, trainers also, that capacity, capacity uh, building of our trainers. We have gone further also and looked at the leadership of different institutions under the CAFE program, building their capacity so that they are also able to play a role in changing the perception of Tibet. So personally, uh, I'm not the same Tom that I was in 2017. Now it's almost, it's almost four years, huh? and I think I've, I've really changed in terms of uh, the way of looking at things. So KFEP really shaped me in terms of uh, management and how to manage change. Huh? Today, several national polytechnics honor the CAFEP project by planting trees. Incorporating environmental issues into the curriculum is something that we've learned. I would say for the last two years since uh, CAFEP started, we've been planting not less than 2,000 trees, for actually for the last three years. We also, in the, in, in the spirit 
of promoting the environmental uh, agenda, we established a KFEP corner. A KFEP corner where we have, we said now, we are going to call it a KFEP corner in honor of the project. And when we have activities, we mark 30 day by planting some trees at the KFEP corner. For all its successes, KFEP has faced some challenges, not the least of which was the COVID-19 pandemic. There could be challenges, yes, but we are saying we will not be crying about the challenges. We will have to find a way out and things must move on. Despite these obstacles, the National Polytechnics and their Canadian partners have developed curriculum for 17 new CBEC courses, all of which should be approved and launched by the end of 2021. As well, nearly 500 trainers have taken part in CBET, gender, and industry training sessions with Canadian partners, which will ultimately benefit more than 29,000 students within their institutions. Although the formal part of the project is wrapping up, those involved say KFEP's legacy will continue. KFEP has been central to so many activities over the past five years. There have been capacity building, there have been supply of equipment, there have been exchange programs. Here and there we've seen staff going to Canada and also Canadians coming here so that we can share ideas. And you can imagine how much the institution has benefited out of that. KFEP is everything, it's very important. Through KFEB, we see wide opportunities, job opportunities for our students. Through KFEB, we are seeing our curriculums improve. And uh, through KFEB, we are introducing or adding more curriculums in our institutions. My uh, message to the Canadian partners is to say that uh, we are most grateful for this journey that we have walked. Uh, we are uh, very appreciative of what they have brought to this country, the competence-based education and training agenda. Uh, we look forward to continued collaboration uh, so that we can be able to continue on this path uh, even going forward. Canadian and Kenyan colleges and institutes have built lasting and, 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 and strong and meaningful relationships that are setting the foundation for future collaboration. Back home in Garissa, Jaden Bithi is close to finishing her diploma in Automotive Engineering Level 3. I'm more confident. Like, for example, if I want to go to work, then the employer asks me, do you have any experience? I can tell him, yeah, I have experience. I can use the machines. I can work with them. And to answer her family's question, is she too tiny? No one is tiny to any any job, no one is small, nothing is impossible. If your kid, I'm a, if your sister, if your brother has passion in something, then just encourage her, encourage him to do it. She'll make it. <laughs>